Hi everybody, it's Mark J. Parker. Thank you for checking out Release Date Rewind. This is a special episode of the podcast. Normally, we celebrate movie anniversaries, but this episode is all about a TV show celebrating a milestone anniversary, and I hope you enjoy it. All right, everybody, I am so excited. I'm shaking because this is a first for Release Date Rewind. Maybe this episode is is a special premiere date rewind or something, if I could say it clearly. But in this special episode, we are talking about the first season of Dawson's Creek, a very special show in our lives for our generation. I am joined by my cast members, my Cape Siders. (laughs) (laughs) I am joined by Sarah Menequal and Kit Sheehan, who have been on the show before. Hello, my hometown loves. Hey, hometown loves. Isn't this also, I'm just so grateful. Thank you guys for doing this. Thank you for watching more hours than you were probably hoping. I don't know, maybe. You never have to twist my arm. Good. I, I knew it all I, over again. <laughs> I mean, like, and we're missing our our fourth. We're missing our fourth lead, no. Melissa Ward, who who is a brand new mom. So maybe she'll join. But I mean, you know, we'll give her shit later. But at least we have the a, a reunion of three now. Okay, I guess I'm obviously Dawson. I feel like that makes a lot of sense. Yes. Kit, you're obviously Joey, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, so then Sarah, are you Jen Grant. or Pacey? The Jen. <laughs> Yeah, your grabs <laughs> all the way. Uh, I, I believe I'm a Pacey. Of course. Yeah, 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 I think so too. Well, you, you took mu- the test. You're I, very okay, much. You said I'm a Pacey. Okay, yes. yeah. Wait, hold on, everybody, because yes, let's talk about this test. Was that the thing I sent you? Because did you guys do it, and I somehow missed the texts? Did you guys also yeah. do the? Yeah, we didn't send the screen grabs through. Oh. We just like announced. I somehow totally I like, I'm a Joey. did not receive those. Wow. Okay. So okay. So you got Joey. I got Joey. What did you yeah. get, Sarah Pacey? I got Pacey. You actually and did Melissa get Pacey. Got Pacey got oh Pacey. wow. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's funny now having rewatched. I pretty much rewatched almost all 13 episodes which is crazy that i even did that i watched like 12. Yes. there was one in the middle that i was like i don't need to see them go to providence i'm gonna just skip <laughs> that one right um yes. but it's crazy re-watching it i have how... things to say about that episode oh good please yeah fill fill my brain in because that was yeah. when i was like hey listen i'm watching four episodes in one day i gotta i gotta speed through <laughs> but it really is funny how joey and pacey I think we can all agree, at least after watching most yes. of the episodes of one, are the best characters, you know? Do you agree? A hundred percent. I also did not recall that the writers kind of clocked that chemistry from as early as season one. Right. Yes. In my mind, it's such a season two, season three plot line. Well, and beyond, but yep. comes to a head in season two and three. I was... I totally forgot yeah. they had like a whole standalone episode by themselves and PC made a move. And like, I'm so happy that the writers saw what we could all see. Yeah. Yes. Well, Just, also, uh, maybe well, I'm totally behind. Maybe I'm 25 years behind. Did you guys know that I didn't realize they actually dated during, I guess, shooting season one or two? Because there's yeah. a quote from Katie Holmes saying like, I met someone in 1998 and I like absolutely fell head over heels for him. And like, so the writers could also see their growing chemistry mm-hmm. and that apparently it was never really part of the plan to make them such a like leading couple. So they were using like life and adding it into the show. I didn't know that. Did you guys know that? No. I knew that they dated I okay during yeah. the show. I also, I could be fabricating this, but I feel pretty confident saying, I think he's someone who helped get her out of Scientology. I'm pretty sure he was like a part of like the rescue crew. Really? Now, can I just say real quick, when are we going to get a Lifetime movie just about Katie Holmes's exit? Like getting in the car, driving to her parents' house in Ohio from, I assume, L.A. I don't know where they were living at the time. It would have to be, yeah. Right? It was, yeah, it was. And then she filed in New York for divorce so that she, because New York has more mother lenient laws oh. like california it's 50 50 is the like you have to prove one way or the other to get more than 50 50 but new york it's still like 
60, 40 tops. Like, wow. <laughs> why hasn't she monetized this story? Like, I, she must be under a crazy she NBA. Must, exactly. Yeah, because be obviously really her career's in the shitter. So like, go make a buck off of this story. People want, I, I'm still curious. It's a decade later and I still oh, want to see happened. If anything, I need to know more now more. than I did when it was happening. Like, yeah. give us more, give us, give us <laughs> more. Yeah. Now that um, the dust is settled, like yeah. what the f- Fuck. But I think you're. I think you're so oh, right. Wait. I feel like she signed so many things before she even married Tom Cruise. Yeah. That yes. She. He's a notorious NDA. Like yeah. he's notorious for making you like sign an NDA if you're gonna attend a party with him. Like. Oh God. And it's like, who wants to who wants to sign something before entering a party? I mean, I, I guess if I'm really desperate, but I'm like, I'll just turn around and I'm also good. like all of his mates <laughs> and like cooks and stuff are like right. people who are in the church they're essentially enslaved <laughs> oh my god seriously <laughs> lest oh. we forget <laughs> yet the oh, guy dude. pops on screen he still he does. does sadly i know it's, he it's does crazy would. He's a witch. He, Listen, he has this all. People who rise to the top of cults, I'm no one is saying they're not charismatic. I think they're problematically charismatic. <laughs> yes. The fact that I'm still like, oh, Top Gun Maverick. Okay. Yeah. I'll watch a little bit of Cruise. Like, yeah. He oh, owns God. people. I know that. <laughs> watch it. <laughs> and is it me or does it feel like since their breakup, like every leading lady in a Tom Cruise movie, which there haven't really been that many, I feel like in past years, they all kind of like are in that Katie Holmes umbrella like Jennifer Connelly who I love you know is yes. you know in that Katie Holmes umbrella Michelle Monaghan and the Mission Impossible movies basically a look alike for I'm just like yes hmm. I don't know that's just my mm. tangent it, it, over it's there it's like to constantly repair yeah. to publicly repair to be like look how much fun we have <laughs> yeah me <laughs> and other brunettes Katie and I. we get along yeah. great it was just that <laughs> one who, very normal I have to actually tell you guys I think I don't know if I'm being crazy. Joshua Jackson is an awesome actor. He's great. And I knew that. And I remembered that well. But you know, Katie Holmes, I forgot actually, I'd say 90% of the time, I really actually loved watching her, re-watching her again in season one. I actually think she's quite good for this role. I know every now and then, you know, we talked for years about the crooked smile and like, yeah. God, some of those looks Go later on in the season. She's really looking at her like, <laughs> yeah. you know, <laughs> but you know, I think she delivers a lot of her comedy really, really well, that sarcasm. And yeah. I don't know, I, I I fell in love with her again, actually, I have to say. More so than She's Michelle Williams. I found her something, a bit of a wet I will blanket. Say. Yes. Oh, see, I, I've, I was re-struck. I was like, well, this is why Michelle popped. This yeah. is why she yeah. came out of this, her scene with Gramps, like the, oh, yeah. the, the tears and the whole. Mm -hmm. But I was, I've gone back and forth with Katie Holmes. Like I used to think she, when we were really young, I used mm -hmm. to think like she was like the height of like just naturalistic, like to be mm -hmm. natural. And I'm like, no, that's like insecure. <laughs> that's like a tick. That's like a nervous yeah. tick. It's not a choice. <laughs> Yeah. not a character choice and so she like so then i like went full i was like i could do that and she's not good at all and i'm very jealous and i'm yeah. gonna like funnel that jealousy into a misplaced rage um and now i've come back to be like you know what i see how she got cast though because mm. she's so she does have this mournful quality there's so much she gets for free she has this mournful quality with her eyes she's beautiful and she is like she's good in terms of like she is she's always doing something like when her character's walking she's thinking of something or reacting to something someone says or playing with her jacket and i'm like okay she breathes life into this like this could yeah. be worse yeah. i am i remembered it worse than what it was <laughs> i did too yeah i think you yeah. know for whatever reason my mind went back to a lot of the cheesy stuff and re-watching i think this is at least season one i haven't rewatched any yeah. of the other seasons and i know we were talking a little bit offline about the college years i know sarah enjoys the college years <laughs> love them i love that you he love them I, 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 will, I can't and, I I can barely remember them. By th I just remember watching them live and being like, why every Wednesday? I guess it was on Wednesdays. The first season it was on Tuesdays. Then it lived on Wednesdays for the rest of the run. Yes. I just Buffy remember every Wednesday Tuesday. night being like, yeah, Buffy moved to Tuesday. Mm -hmm. But I just remember being like, why am I still watching this show once they were in college? But, you know, at stop. least season one is a really great show. There's a lot of great storylines. Like I said, a lot of good comedy that I completely forgot. Yes. yes. You know what I mean? Yes. yes. Totally agree. I think I've I think I fall on a different 
side of okay how I feel about Katie in this rewatch. Okay. In that she is always doing something and I don't always need her to be doing something. <laughs> and, oh, God. And actually, this is not about you. I, like, in my notes, I wrote like, she walks, she's clearly using her walk to show us, I'm a tomboy. Oh, yeah. It's and as like, if they told her like, don't forget Katie, like you're supposed to be a tomboy. So really give me that energy. I, oh, huh. And like <laughs> yeah. a lot of that. Yeah. Lawson. And but like, then on the flip side, Jen is always, Michelle Williams is always, you can't really see, but she's always got her hands on her hips. Mm. And she's always, uh, and like she this. does this like Reverse thing that's, hands on hips. Yes, the nurse, yeah, the, the my back hurts. Hands yes. on hips. She the and nurse Bessie, <laughs> she, yeah, she and Joey's sister, Bessie, have the same posture. Joey's it's always like, sister, <laughs> Bessie was heavily pregnant. <laughs> yes. <laughs> As or, any woman named Bessie should be. Uh, <laughs> right, exactly. I know, I mean, every character. They're like, but, we'll have a pregnant character and we shall <laughs> call her Bessie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, or Jen, she's either doing that or she does this thing where whenever she's walking, Oh, let me see if I can kind of reenact it. It's kind of like a, you, you know, Dawson. It's this almost like Nell, Jodie Foster Nell <laughs> swaying. Goodbye. Goodbye. Yes, like it's just kind of like, and she could be happy or sad. She's just like, yeah, you know what? Let's go to that carnival. Or it's, you know, Dawson. Um, I just it's just this weird swaying that would take me she out of does. it sometimes. You and know, then, or she'll go backward. Like yeah, that. the backward. <laughs> and then it's, yeah. yeah, with the hurting back. With the, the, the nurse. Out of the main four, the, the person that had the most kind of like, the least awkward physical presence is Joshua Jackson, for me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Which which and is, I, I guess, also his character. Beak, even though, and no matter what, and I'm looking at it as they close up, they zoom in and I'm, and I'm like, he does have the skin right here is so soft, but mm. goddamn, if that man doesn't look a day old, <laughs> no day younger than 35, at the very, he's like, I'm just, I don't know, freaked out because I'm like a high school sophomore. I'm like, bullshit. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, I, I feel like he changed his voice to be higher. Like that mm. was the thing that caught me most about his performances. He's like, hey, Joey. And I'm like, no, no fucking chance. That shit <laughs> is in your chest, my dude. <laughs> like no chances your, <laughs> is your voice that high pitched. Yeah. So sorry it's to- It's breaking you. right now. Yeah. yeah. That's a really oh, interesting point, Sarah. Yeah, because there are moments where he's like, hey, Jen, uh, you want to go? To, and it just feels like okay. put on. I totally, I totally hear you. Yeah. But also showing Greg, because Greg only ever saw the hurricane episode, which oh I can't wait God. to talk about that in a few minutes. Because wow. <laughs> but um, I showed him today the scare, aka the Friday yes, the Thirteenth episode. Friday the 13th. I've always loved that episode. Wow, wow, wow. But yes. he said about James Vanderbeek's face that yes, he looks so much older than them. When really he was only, I think, like maybe twenty, twenty one. Scott Foley was like 25 yeah. and and Greg Denley said like, no, that guy is an adult. He's yeah. out of college. He's, yeah. and I was like, yeah, the next year he was in Felicity in college. Yeah, so as I mean, an you know. RA, as like a year <laughs> yeah, older than older Felicity. College yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Like yeah. So like college. everyone's like, no, that's a man. Everyone else. Sure. But even Dawson's <laughs> face, his, and it's funny cause I was trying to figure out a way to say it. And James Vanderbeek is perfect for this role. I think, I think he's, doing mm -hmm. just yeah. exactly what we need, that neurotic goofiness. But his emotions, his like, you know, he's just so kind of like elf-like at times that it is a little off-putting, right? Yeah. The features yeah. just, yeah, it's like the well, face is big he, and everything's big. That's right? how you get also, the crying meme. I don't yeah. wanna, he can't control this, but my God, the size of the dome on that guy. <laughs> Whoa! That was another. I was thinking that too. I was like, they, it's it's not that he did has a, a forehead on his, wrinkle. It's just like there's so many face. bones. They did a zoom in on him at one point, and it cut off literally like like <laughs> like. <laughs> Well, and that's why the Oompa Loompa joke in the detention episode really kind of, ooh, I feel like I'm living through it with him because I felt like that was, they took that from his real life, maybe, that that maybe. insult. Yeah. I don't know. Well, should I be offended? Because people said I looked like Dawson. Do I not have the dome size? You do not have. Oh, no, you okay, don't. thank you. It's already, yeah. if I did, you can be honest, but. No. Uh, I would tell at... you, you do not. Okay. I miss the dome. James Vanderbeek did kind of grow into now that he's mm. not having the cascading hair. It yeah. kind of like looks just a bit looks normal. 
them all. Yeah. And, you know, the cascading hair was beautiful, but then by the end of the season when it was also cascading down here, it's just like, ooh, we got to really, you know, it's just he and I mean, really, it was great casting that all four of them are so opposite. You really had the opposites with the girls. You had the opposites with the guys. You had Pacey with, as Joey says in one episode, a Julius Caesar haircut and like, yeah. you know, he very simple hair. And he then really Dawson's did. got these flowing locks that are kind of silly, you know, yeah. but... <laughs> There comes a time in all of our lives. How about Dawson? Uh, you're, you're Dawson. Dawson, yeah, I know. Um, we met before. Wow, you, you look different. Puberty. Hi, I'm Joey. I live down the creek, and we've never met. When it's the end of something simple. Are you and Dawson a <laughs> thing? No, oh, we're just friends. And the beginning. Oh, my God. Of everything else. Do you think I could help you locate a video? Where would I find the graduate? Were we supposed, was Dawson supposed to be the male heartthrob? No. And I'm glad you bring that up because I saw, maybe you guys saw this too if you were doing some uh, research. I saw that, um, so Joshua Jackson was one of apparently the first to like audition and Kevin Williamson and crew like knew no matter what, like, oh, this guy's got to be something. So he was originally yeah. in the running for Dawson. But... Mm -hmm. But Kevin Williamson and especially the network, I guess the WB themselves were like, hey, he's great, but he's not the Dawson that you've written. Like, we need someone that's a little bit more neurotic, a little more everyday normal, which yeah. is funny because Joshua Jackson is, of course, extremely attractive, such a cute guy then and now. But I guess also he's kind of, to me, sort of like normal. It's not like yeah. we had like a major beautiful guy. Yeah, he wasn't like cause... Tom Welling. Like, right. He wasn't You're like right. a Superman guy. The WB you know? had like other more chiseled men, uh, yeah. you know, in the years to come that luckily this cast was never, in my opinion, like the hotties, which I think is good for the yeah. show. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's more believable. Yeah. We can take it. We can we yes. can take it more seriously because another teen soap like this would have, you know, I'm trying to think like like the Riverdales, you know, how everyone's like so. Ugh chiseled yeah. yes you know riverdale is like trying to be euphoria which is like a fever dream that we all had like one time we got drunk in high school like <laughs> it's not it's, it's not like this i'm not saying yeah. it was great or safe or legal all the time but it wasn't that oh i know yeah this makes euphoria look like an absolute nightmare i mean yeah. dawson's cr i mean euphoria is the uh, upside down in Stranger Things in when you when you're in Cape Side. Whoa. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. Yes. Jen like came Jen transferred from Euphoria, New York. Yeah. Into, like, there you go. Yeah. yeah. Jen Jen was the um why can I not remember her name? Sydney Sweeney of yes. of her old life, yeah. maybe. I don't know. Cassie? Right? Well, supposedly. Cassie. Cassie. Yeah. Cassie, yeah. Supposedly, yeah. Which all right, well, since we're talking about the actors, why don't I set the scene, yeah. guys? Let's set the yeah. scene and then let's nerd out about the first episode and let's go through. Yeah. I want you guys to tell me all of your thoughts, you know, what it was like rewatching. So let me set the scene. We are going back 25 years, everybody. We are rewinding to January 20th, 1998. That is when it was a Tuesday night, the WB Tuesday. Dawson's Creek premiered at 9 p.m. Its lead in was Buffy. And so it was interesting looking at the TV schedule. Buffy was on Monday nights after Seventh Heaven. Buffy was airing season two, Seventh heaven was also season two um so this was still very early in the wb i was looking thursday night friday night saturday night the wb just had nothing on i guess it was repeats wow. or just like like so they didn't even have a full schedule wow. that's how early this was right but so buffy aired at nine on mondays but this week with dawson's creek premiere week they had a two-parter so it was funny, Buffy aired both Monday night and Tuesday night. So uh, I, I, I didn't know that. I forgot that. But you know, I was glued. I'm like, okay, give me <laughs> yes. everything. Now, Kit, I know, loves Buffy. Sarah, I forget. You didn't I really do. watch Buffy, right? I have, I've only watched the first episode of oh, wow. it. Oh, okay. um, And I support people who support Buffy. <gasps> it was I think you would really like it. That's me, sure. Hey, tomorrow. Hi. Casey, what are you doing here? Summer 42 is officially reserved in your name. My mom knew that Dawson's Creek was about sex. Yeah. And as like a kid, when I finally was allowed to watch it in seventh grade, from seventh mm. grade onward, I remember thinking like, this isn't about sex at all. But now as an adult looking back at it, I'm like, this is all about oh sex. Oh my God. It is all, all about shit. sex. Yeah. You hear my mom more... didn't even see the, the, the teacher. 
Oh, like legal sex issues. oh boy. Yeah, <laughs> honestly, disgusting. you know, comparing it to Euphoria, which we know is also all about sex and all that, yeah. but I feel like Dawson's Creek, these characters are talking about sex way more than you. Eu- I mean, Euphoria just they just do it. They're not talking yeah, about it. They're just right. they're just doing all this shit. But wow, so many conversations. You know, how often do you walk your dog? How yes. I mean, my God, all They're right. Just constantly talking about masturbating in a way that teenagers do not. <laughs> <laughs> And might I say the nexus of all of these conversations is one Joey Potter. She is the Mm. horniest person on this show. Because her parents are in a round. I know. (laughs) And I guess Bessie and Bodie are like just doing it all the time, maybe. So she's like, well, like my sisters. Right. I mean, I guess. And like, yeah. her dad had an affair. Right. And I Kevin absolutely... Williamson loves a parental affair. Isn't that crazy? Oh, yeah. There are so many. Rewatching it. Oh, my gosh. There are some lines literally taken from the Scream scripts. But Ma, cheating mom, cheating dad. I mean, that popped up in so much of his stuff at this time. It's so it's like, interesting. okay, buddy? Yeah, I, I, have, I guess his parents must have had something like. I know. I have a book about him that I should have reread. That I did a book report in seventh grade. Um, it was called "From Scream to Dawson's Creek," all about his uh, rise to fame. And I should have reread it for this, but I can o- I can only research so much. Everyone, so much. Yeah. well, that'll be for another day. But um, but so okay, so that's interesting. So I watched live. I I was wow. into it. I was I really loved the poster of all of them. You know, this was the heyday of like floating heads looking yes. kind of seductive on the poster. So I was like, okay, Over yeah, let's creek. do it. Over the <laughs> creek. So I watched it live. I can't really remember what I thought of it. I kind of knew half of it, especially at that age. We were like in fifth grade. We were, what, 10 going on 11-ish. So I was definitely aware of like, okay, this is so corny, but I also love so many elements of it. So I think from the start, I didn't hate watch it, but I definitely kind of, you know, kind of watched it with a half critical, half loving eye. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so this is what was going on at the time, okay? Yeah. So teen TV shows up until this point, like I said, Buffy and Seventh Heaven were airing. They were season two, 90210, Beverly Hills 90210, not the reboot that came a couple of years later. That was still airing. That was airing season season eight. Melrose Place was in season six, and Party of Five was season four. So that's kind of w- the, the landscape of teen dramas. Um, let's see. On the news side, the country was starting to hear about Bill Clinton and Monica Lewinsky, and... Fun fact, I saw this, I think it was episode two, um, was, that was the same night all the networks were airing Bill Clinton's, like, emergency live speech saying, I did not have sex with that woman. But the WB wasn't. They were like, no, no, we are airing episode two of Dawson's Creek. So sorry. (laughs) Where a teacher abuses her position of power and has sex with a child. How timely. Right? I was like, whoa, that's crazy that that news was breaking. They're like, we did it hotter. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, Watch it's it. different when it's an older woman. <laughs> yeah. Right? You will never get it. <laughs> yes. So I thought that was crazy timing. On the music side, we were just talking about it. Truly Madly Deeply by Savage Garden was the number one single for a couple weeks. Oh. All the rage. You're mm-hmm. Still the One by Shania Twain. And oh. Getting Jiggy With It from Will Smith. They were about to be big singles. They were they released later in January. And then, of course, popular movies, Titanic was number one. It had just come out around the holidays. Goodwill Hunting and As Good As It Gets were also very popular. And Spice World had just come out yeah. in theaters this same week. So, yeah, check that out. We'll talk about Spice World in a different episode. So that was all what was going on, you know, popular stuff. And I thought this was interesting. Promotion-wise, I never knew this. I mean, we all saw Titanic in theaters, I think, right? Oh, yeah. I'm sure, yeah. Right? I was I mean, allowed to see Titanic. I was like, not yes. as good as it gets, not good Will Hunting. Oh, yeah, yeah. Those were, yeah, a little, <laughs> little uh, more mature, right? Yeah. But I don't have any memory of, of this whatsoever, but the WB was the first TV network to run trailers of a show in the movie theater. They were putting the trailer Ooh. for season one of Dawson's Creek with Titanic. Isn't that interesting? That uh, is brilliant marketing, right? Like, brilliant. Yeah, the, the Venn, Venn diagram. diagram. <laughs> yes. right. Venn like what a time yeah. to be alive for like us ten-year-olds and all these hotties and you know teens yeah. were like young adults were like ruling the world of entertainment. So there you go. Right? <laughs> like, are you a horny child? Well, guess what? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we have something for you. We Lots have a freak options. for you. Yes. <laughs> so Kevin Williamson created the show. It is inspired by his life in North Carolina, which so funny, guys. I knew they shot in Wilmington, North Carolina, which I still would love to visit someday same as i know what you did last summer which kate was on this show talking about that with me um but all these years since the show ended i 
I guess I forgot. I knew it was Cape Side, but I thought Cape Side was in North Carolina, but it's in Massachusetts. So they keep talking in the first episode. I'm like, why are they they talking about Boston? I'm like, there are other cities closer to you in North Carolina. And I'm like, oh, they live like, okay, interesting. Yeah, apparently the network. I know, because he he was all for it takes place in North Carolina, very much mimicking his life. But the network said, can you make it Massachusetts and can they live like outside of Boston? And so. he was like, do I have to change anything? And they were like, no, God, no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And he was like, okay, no, no. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, don't and change the decor. Don't change the foliage. Yeah. The trees yes. are the same. <laughs> the reeds on the... <laughs> yep. the do not change a goddamn thing about that creek. Let me tell you. <laughs> Every coast is the same. Keep the it. creek is a lot. Not a hill okay. in sight. Yeah. Flat land everywhere. Yeah. Right. Exactly um, what so he had just had success, of course, with Scream 2 had just come out. I know what you did last summer, Scream, of course. So he was like literally the screenwriter like to get in your team. He it's funny later this year. It's funny how everyone except James Vanderbeek had then their breakout movie role. Of course, Joshua Jackson, we know, was already in the, the Mighty Ducks trilogy so he was probably the most well known of the group but later in 98 you had michelle williams was um in halloween h2o which kevin williamson produced and steve minor producer and director of this show and he directed the first episode he directed that movie so funny a lot of crossover you had her in that you had katie holmes in disturbing behavior that summer and then you had joshua jackson in urban legend so it's funny how teaching mrs tingle yes teaching mrs tingle that one like teacher mrs tringle tringle (laughs) yep exactly I was just gonna say, there's a moment in another episode, a follow on episode where Joey is faking her pregnancy and she calls her Mrs. Tingle. (gasps) Oh, they just, they just changed it. Okay. Well, that was promotion because Katie did that movie with Kevin Williamson uh, the year after. Right. And it's funny because James Vanderbeek did not do the horror thing like the rest of them. And he didn't do a movie until the following year with Varsity Blues. Which was and then iconic. rules of attraction and then rules of attraction, after, which, which was is in him that... trying to get in, back into that disturbing behavior. <laughs> yes, like, I want to make that young disturbed teen money. And that was at a time when, like, I remember he and like Jessica Biel, like everyone on the WB wanted to do like a role that was not so yeah. cookie cutter. Sarah Michelle Gellar did, of course, uh, Cruel Intentions with oh. Joshua Jackson. So you know, yes. everyone then like had their. They're like, I'm going to be a bad whatever, you know. Yeah, so he based this on his life. He had to write a 20-page outline in one night because apparently when he met the other producer of the show, this executive named Paul Stupin, Paul was like, hey, we know you do movies. What what TV show ideas do you have? And he didn't have anything, apparently. So he just was like, well, there's this teenager who loves Steven Spielberg and makes movies with his friends by the water. And he's like, I love that. Can you make an outline so we can pitch it to the networks tomorrow? And he he literally had to write it that night. I thought that was funny. So that's kind of how the idea started. He said, this is a quote from Williamson. He says he pitched the show as some kind of wonderful, which is an 80s movie, meets Pump Up the Volume. I don't know that one. Meets James at 15. Meets My Soul Called Life, which we know. Meets Little House on the Prairie. Familiar with so, that as well. Yeah, Is it a dance element or I yeah I don't know I, that I it was, was like the Little House on the Prairie joke that they added into the script in the first episode. Oh. Yeah. Wait a minute. What is the joke? It's now- when she says like, oh, hey, it's Nellie, right? Isn't that her name? She was yes, like, hey, Nelly. I'm like Nellie. And she goes like Little House on the Prairie. She yes. goes, yeah, I get that all the time. So do you like to party? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Like, um, do you mean by party? Do you mean have a good time? Or do you mean in just various substances? And blah, 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 blah. Right. She was like, what? And she, I like to have a, a good time substance free just, yes. wow maybe we should call you nelly <laughs> yeah. yeah isn't it funny I, you just made me remember kit that nelly is in the first few episodes and then we don't see a peep from her ever again what is that about the world closes in around these I mean, because she... obviously they're in debt they're they've all been dead for some time and it's like lost and like, yeah. Just, yeah. like or sartre's no exit like it's yes. just them torturing each other i mean i do feel like the first few episodes it's clear that they are throwing everything at the wall <laughs> to see what sticks yep including <laughs> characters yeah yep thanks so much for watching Next week will be part two of this discussion. And in the meantime, please follow Release Date Rewind on Instagram. 